question is from Nick Mag 4 What's the best way to retain muscle mass while decreasing body fat, specifically in terms of how to alter training and how to split up my diet? You, you know, when it comes to, I, I've been thinking a lot about questions like this, and the goal with resistance training should almost always be to try and build muscle and gain strength. Now, why is that a goal when you're trying to cut? Because one of the inevitable side effects of decreasing body fat is that your body will try to reduce muscle mass to slow down your metabolism to make up for the difference. And one of the best ways to prevent the loss of muscle mass is to train as if you're trying to build. Now, your diet is what will reflect the fat loss goal. So if I eat in a calorie deficit, then I'm going to burn body fat and I'm going to lose the least amount of muscle if I lift weights like I'm trying to build. I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm cutting. Now the way I train is going to be to burn the most amount yeah. of calories all no, the time. No. And you know they lose that muscle building signal and they end up with muscle loss along with it. I, I like this question because we also get a lot of questions around uh, you know all of our programs because they're all broken up in three or four phases. And people are always asking me like, you know, how should I diet through this yeah. program? Should I be on a bulk? Should, should I be exactly, on a deficit? Should I be on a bulk? Should I be on a cut? I'll tell you how I like to do this with clients. And it all depends on who the, where the person is uh, metabolism-wise, how, how fast is it or how slow is it, on what I'm trying to do nutritionally with them. They're going to follow the program as as planned no matter what. Like, like to Sal's point, you're always training to build muscle or retain the most, and that's why programs are phased the way they are because – one of the ways you can almost guarantee you're probably going to lose muscle mass is stay on the same program, the same training regimen for six plus months straight consistently, and then go into a hardcore diet and cut. Uh, you want to, you're going to lose muscle. It's yeah, just that, the muscle building signal is is lost its luster. Yes, and you're at a calorie deficit. Oh yeah. So one of my a simple answer to this that I love to do is, and I'm about to do this right now. I'm uh, I'm helping out a couple close friends with diet and coaching. They're they're following. Uh, one of them's falling strong, one's falling anabolic. Uh, both are female. I've been trying to uh, re uh, speed up their metabolism. One of them's about 2,200 calories. The other one's around 2,500 calories. The goal, I'm trying to get them closer to 3,000. And what I'll do is when I when I start to cut from them and reduce calories, I, I also like to time it on a, a, a transition in the phase of the programming. So like right now, one of them is on phase one of strong and you know, technically I could, I could start to cut her calories right now, but I like to do it right when I, I send a, a really different signal to her body on a new phase. Makes sense. So you, you, you want to cut the calories when she's getting the loudest, most effective muscle building signal to yeah. offset. And in my opinion, my, or my theory sense. is that that not only benefits uh, her with building muscle and or retaining muscle at least it also promotes fat burning because sure. she's getting this unique signal now or different you know the novelty side of it because she's been in a phase for three or four weeks in phase one and now boom all of a sudden she's seeing new rep ranges new exercises body's going oh wow try and build muscle adapt oh my god we're not getting calories too so it's burning like crazy so even though it's kind of a competing signal it i I find a lot of value. This is how I used to train myself for shows is I always made moves in my diet when I was also making transitions in the phases to, to promote the greatest change. That's really mm. smart, Adam. I've never uh, I've never thought of doing that, but that makes absolutely that makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. I'll even also make uh, intentionally bump their protein a little bit. So I'll, I'll cut calories, but then I'll also uh, elevate their protein because most of my, my girls I like running or, you know, you know, off like the 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8 range. When we cut, I'll normally bump them through like to the more like the one to one point two five range of protein, but I'm also reducing calories and changing the protein. No, that and that's the second part. Is the other thing you can do is eat a high protein diet and push the upper limit of what is uh, beneficial. And studies show what you you heard Adam referring to some numbers. Studies show about 0. 0.6 to one gram of, of protein per pound of body weight is where you're going to reap the benefits of a high-protein diet. Any more than that, you typically don't, don't reap any additional benefits. But when your calories are low, a higher-protein diet is actually more important. You actually can get away with lower protein when you're at a calorie surplus. This is because the excess calories are protein-sparing. The body stops reaching for protein for energy. It's got plenty of calories from carbs and from fats, and it's not as important. So if I'm in a bulk, believe it or not, high-protein is important. 
But if I'm in a bulk, it's less important than if I'm in a cut. When I'm in a cut and my calories are low, mm -hmm. that's when it makes the most sense to push the upper limit of the you know beneficial effects of protein. And studies show consistently that that preserves the most muscle. They also show uh, that they also help burn the most body fat, probably through the indirect effect of maintaining a faster metabolism. So when you're trying to get cut, whether you're trying to get cut or bulk up, Resistance training should be geared around building muscle. It'll give you the best results either way. Also consider this. Resistance training, like any tool, is very good at what it's designed for and is eh, it's kind of good for other stuff, but it's really good for what it's designed for. Resistance training, can you build lots of stamina and endurance with it? Yes. Can you get super flexible with it? Yes. Uh, but it's best for building muscle. Nothing. There's no modality that exists that builds muscle as, as effectively as resistance training. So when you do the resistance training, do it, use it uh, the way it's best used, which is build muscle. And that's regardless of whether or not you're trying to burn body fat or gain weight. All right.